Please open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, and follow along with today's sermon. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Sound good? Thank you. Um, my prayer is uh, to open this little adventure would be to say, as you help me pray, Dear Father in heaven, guide us through the rest of this day as we celebrate Father's Day and as the youngins uh, ask for you to, to help them celebrate you also and hopefully that we uh, get through this day and everything works out really good and my disclaimer is that if you come down and put your arm around my shoulders I can do this in your name we pray amen I haven't made a lesson plan for a long time <clears throat> and in the 31 years I taught uh, you know, lesson plans for Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare stuff, how to do a, a, a paragraph on something, uh, Animal Farm, uh, little things like that. that was a piece of cake. This is a little tougher. Uh, when Jay asked me to do this, I hesitated, and then I thought, you know, let's give this a shot. We're celebrating a special day, and uh, <clears throat> my lesson plan is written on the same kind of stuff that I did at school, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And uh, also a part of my disclaimer is if, if I kind of shuffle things around, looking for things a little bit, bear with me, please. And uh, uh, if things don't go as smoothly as possible, like our scripture says, I beg your forgiveness. Okay? The Bible is full of examples of forgiveness. Um, when we look at um, Bible and helpers for Bibles, one of, one of my best ones is this handbook of applications. You can see how thick it is. But in this, in th just this book, uh, forgiveness is covered by God's forgiveness, and there are lots of different little things. I, I thought one of the interesting thing is, and, and I think we all know this anyway, that <clears throat> experiencing God's forgiveness comes through confession and repentance. Not just confession, but repentance. And uh, if you know the story of David, King David, and he did a lot of bad things, uh, and God even forgave him. And no sin is too great to be forgiven. The key is God forgives us but it doesn't always erase the natural consequences of our sins. We still got to deal with those. But I thought that was really interesting that that, uh, that is a, a big key that God forgives anything if you ask him to. Um, the other part of this is human forgiveness. And we're going to spend some time on that. Uh, especially forgiving. That seems to be the hardest part. All right, shuffle around a little bit. Um, when we talk about forgiveness, um, when you need somebody to forgive you, that's an interesting concept. And there are several things that I jotted down here, uh, bear with me while I talk about it a little bit. Um, when uh, we're all little kids, you can remember, you know, if you have siblings, either older or younger, uh, I remember one time we were at my grandmother's and grandma always put the cookies out on the table, you know. 
and my two little sisters, we'd all sit there with the milk and the cookies, and somehow the last two cookies always found their way to my plate. <laughs> and uh, I always wondered if my sisters ever forgave me for taking them, but I doubt it. Um, my one little sister, one time after Christmas, I, have, I got this favorite toy, and she got mad at me sometime after that and took it out in the street and th threw it down in the bricks and stomped on it. And did I forgive her? Nah, not at the time, but... Um, nor did I forgive the young man who I thought was my buddy who in the seventh grade stole my girlfriend. Now, later on, it worked out that I'm glad he did. You know, that kind of thing. Um, one time my sister, my middle sister had her diary laying out and I mean, he's just laying out on the table. What, am, what are you supposed to do, you know? So I was kind of looking at it. And, so I better shut this or she's going to be mad. So two, three, ten, twelve minutes later, I shut it. <laughs> but she figured out I looked at it because I put the bookmark in the wrong page. And then she didn't forgive me for a long time either. Um, forgiveness is uh, an, an interesting thing in that when we talk about how we forgive people or how people forgive us when when we're either hurt or embarrassed or or uh, desecrated somehow uh, does it happen right away not always um, uh, pastor Jay's sermon last year included dr. Emmett Brown's little DeLorean where you could go back to the future and go back to the past and uh, fix things. Well, we can't do that. So, you know, when things happen, they happen. Um, and a lot of times it, uh, it, gets, it gets a little sticky. I'm already to the second page. Okay. Many kinds and sizes of forgiveness. When we were little kids all the way up to now and, and beyond now, we're going to be involved in, in forgiveness. And it's, it's one of those things that uh, we, in fact, we just talked about it a couple times, and we'll go back to those in a minute. Um, to be forgiven, um, when something happens and you say something to your friends or your family or your neighbors or a stranger or a fellow churchgoer, uh, and, you, and you, you know that you did it on purpose, but you're kind of either playing with them or you're being sarcastic, uh, right away you need to start thinking about, oops, I'm sorry. Those two famous words. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um, accidentally hurting somebody, or or embarrassing somebody, or or uh, picking on somebody. Heaven forbid I would pick on anybody. Um, and and if you realize that, that accidentally you did do that, and you say, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. I thought we were doing something else, or or those kind of things. The toughest one is when. We, we touch somebody the wrong way and we don't realize it. And th that other person never says anything. And so several days later or a week later, or, you know, maybe a third party comes up to you and says, hey, you remember when you said such and such to so and so? Yeah, that hurt that person really bad. Oh, man. Now what do we do? Well, do you have enough guts to go to that person and apologize? beg their forgiveness or you to wait till maybe you run into them again sometime you know a lot of us kind of geez I don't know if I want to talk to that person now right now or not or like like our little Bible story I'm going to talk about in a second uh, we maybe need a go-between where somebody helps us uh, make repairs between us and another person that's pretty tough but um, I don't, I don't want to go across the border here just for a second. Let's, let's go do that. But the, I think the hardest one is to forgive. Um, and not in all cases. I mean, if somebody does something like if, if my sister would have taken the last two cookies, I, didn't, I wouldn't have cared much. I probably would have said, Grandma, you got any more cookies? Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. But to, to for us to forgive other people, if they injure us or, or do harm to us or hurt us, uh, even in jest, is, is tough sometimes. Um, 
when our own emotions get involved because we're hurt, uh, that's different than the other way around. At least, it, at least if you look at it in a in a case where if you're not really thinking, I, I know that person didn't mean that, so I'll forgive them. But a lot of times uh, there there's what we call a grudge, and we all know what grudges are, and it's hard to get through the grudge. Uh, if you don't pay attention to why you need to do that. Um, our, our verse today covered both of those things. Um, when we take a look at um, these kind of things, I, I, I'm going to go to this little page 1,455 here. Um, I love this. I love this thing. Uh, in, our, in a story in the Bible, there's a, there's a book in the Bible called Philemon. The entire book is 25 verses long. But it's a really neat story about Paul when he's in jail. Um, writing a letter to his friend Philemon who is a very wealthy man um, he, his house is big enough that he holds church services in his house and one of his um, uh, slaves whose name is um, uh, I'll tell you in a second here here we go um, his, his slave uh, Onesimus stole something from him and then ran away well in those days like even more modern days that was that was punishable by imprisonment or even uh, the, the slave owner was was free to kill the person well he ends up in jail with Paul and of course Paul converts him to Christianity and uh, the story is that Paul strategically writes a, a, a letter to Philemon, first telling him that he prays for his family every day and, and how great it is to be brothers in Christ. And, oh, by the way, and, and the comment thing is, is a bold favor. I have a favor to ask you. I know your slave stole from you and, and uh, was, ran away, but he is a changed person, and he's more like a brother to me than, a, than anything else. I would like you to take him back as a brother, not a slave. And so, very diplomatically, he asked this favor. Uh, it's not like some of us would walk up to our, our buddy and say, hey, you, you got to talk to so-and-so. He's madder than heck at you. That's not very strategic, but sometimes it works. Anyway, one of the things it says in here that in this situation, uh, Onesimus and Philemon both have a responsibility. And we don't think about that word with, with forgiveness a lot of times, but it's responsibility because it's God's command. Um, um, Onesimus is responsible to do what he could to make restitution to Philemon. In turn, Philemon is responsible to accept the overtures of the repentant Onesimus, and they both had to get through these old resentments. But it's What's happened, it happened. Let's start from right now because we're both changed. And it's a, it's a pretty neat little story. And, and uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. So we talk about, um, look at there, we go to page three of it. Um, Philemon, as a very wealthy person, um, I believe it said they lived, that he lived in uh, what was called Colossi, which like the Colossians. Um, and very well to do and still a man of God but in those days people were allowed to own slaves and this is where things happen so you have a person of relative stature up here and then a lowly slave it would be hard for Onesimus to go to him and personally and talk him through this so the Apostle Paul hey no better person to do that than him um, This story is important, and there are dozens of stories in there. I, in my other little book, I have marked forgiveness back there, and there are like 
25 or 30 Bible verses dealing with forgiveness of one kind or another, either from God to us or from us to another person or, or the other person back to us. And uh, I think it's for his glory that we take care of business here. Um, in, uh, in the uh, Bible where that verse is, it's interesting that it is verses 14 and 15. I love this one because it's more plain English. And then if you don't understand anything, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Down here. This is what we're saying here. Um, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. However, if you refuse to forgive others, he won't forgive you either. So it's a, it's a, it's a deal. If you, if you ask God for forgiveness and repent, he'll forgive anything you do. But you've got to practice that. And it's coincidentally right below verses 9 through 13 that start out, Our Father. And what are two of those verses? And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. Done deal. Anywho, um, there, are, there are many, many other examples. And <clears throat> spending time with God's forgiveness would be another whole topic to talk about. Um, and on Father's Day, we... Uh, that's a good time to forgive people. And maybe they'll walk up and say, I forgive you too for stealing those cookies. You never know. And so as we, as we uh, continue through the day, I'll also remind you that the ultimate, ultimate forgiveness, the ultimate forgiveness in the most dire, dire time in the history of our planet, and you all know this story too. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. Finally, they came to a place called the Skull. All three of them were crucified there, Jesus on the center cross and the two criminals on either side. And Jesus looked down and said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Jesus forgave those who nailed him to the cross here in the most unjust situation in history forgiveness was extended without limit so we need to practice what he's preaching so anywho that's my uh, little visit with you today so let's pray dear father in heaven thank you for this opportunity to worship you and get together with all these great people be with us the rest of the day as we celebrate Father's Day and maybe with your guidance next Mother's Day the moms can take over this uh, situation too that would be fun uh, be with us as we go out and uh, bless your name uh, and your son in both of their names Amen <clears throat>